Okay, so welcome to the lesson on the lymphatic circulation, the AMP lesson. So when we talk about the lymphatic circulation, we want to think that this is a circulation that runs very closely to our blood circulation. So we've talked about blood circulation, how it's a two-way circulation. And now we're going to talk about the lymphatic circulation, which is one that not as many people have heard about. So we've all heard about blood circulating the body and how important that is. Um, as massage therapists particularly, you're going to have a great importance placed on the lymphatic circulation. Um, so this is a circulation that runs alongside the blood circulation. Um, because it's a circulation, it's obviously going to be doing some transportation, some distribution. Um, but because it's one way, it sort of starts, does what it needs to do, and then finishes and starts again. Whereas the blood was going somewhere, doing what it needed to do, and then coming back again. So it was forwards and backwards. Your lymphatic circulation starts, does what it needs to do, and then finishes. So transportation, it's going to be helping with distribution um, of fluids and toxins um, and also a little bit of defence for the body as well. So what we will do to begin with is to start talking through the fill in the gap sheet that you all got sent and then we'll obviously advance on that knowledge as we go. So we've already answered the first um, missing word. Lymphatic circulation is a one-way system. Transporting waste and toxins away from the cells. So our blood circulation can deal with a certain amount of waste. We know that it dealt with our carbon dioxide. But there is waste that occurs in the body that comes from the cells that um, the blood can't deal with. The blood's dealing with a lot already and there's certain waste that's just too much for the blood to deal with. So that is where your lymphatic circulation kicks in. It picks up the waste and the toxins that the blood can't manage. So for example, lactic acid. We've talked about lactic acid. It was a byproduct of exercise. That's the... Um, product that makes your muscles feel really achy the day after you've exercised. So the blood can't really deal with lactic acid. Um, so the lymphatic circulation will pick up that as a waste product or a toxin. So it's picking up those products as they leave the cells. So when we talk about a cell, <clears throat> and this is where you might want to just draw this, Or I'll even take a photo of it if you want and I'll put it in the chat. Let's do that. Save you all doing some drawing. Okay, so we've talked about cells. So this is your cell here and it's got all your little organelles in it. I haven't drawn them, but you've got your mitochondria and your centrioles and your lysosomes and all of those little organelles that are doing the jobs that we learned about in that first lesson. In order, um, so this um, cell membrane, we learn as well as semi-permeable. So things can come in and out of our cell membrane. But in order for that to happen, we get a little bit of plasma that leaks out from the cell. And I want you to think about that plasma as a bit like a vortex. So this plasma acts as an ability for things to go in and out of the cell. So to begin with, this plasma is going to leak out from the cell and act as a bit of a, like a transportation system, but not a canal. It's like a, like a chemical ability for things to come in and out. So the plasma seeps out of the cells and the blood vessels around. So it creates this sort of vortex for things to be able to go in and out. So this enables from the blood, um, nutrients, oxygen, etc., to be passed into the cell. And then this also allows waste products, um, excess fluid and toxins to be passed out. Some of these waste products and toxins will be picked up by the blood. So for example, your carbon dioxide, 
But then anything else, example, your lactic acid, your lymphatic vessels are going to collect. So plasma seeps in around the cell from the blood and the cell creates this sort of vortex. Substances can get into the cell and then substances can come out of the cell. Some of those substances are picked up by the blood, but others are picked up by the lymph vessels. So written in a statement is your next paragraph. So before the blood can deliver its nutrients to the cells, plasma seeps out from the blood vessels to surround the cells, which enables nutrients to pass from the blood into the cells and waste products and toxins to pass out of the cells. So some of these waste products and toxins are transported away by the blood. So the ones the blood can deal with, the blood will take, but then everything else formulates into lymph. So that plasma becomes something called tissue fluid. Don't worry about that, it gets very confusing. But that plasma becomes tissue fluid and then that gets carried away as part of the lymphatic system. So if you think these cells are doing this all the time, so lymph is being created all the time and being taken away by the lymph vessels. So lymph then consists of number one, waste. Number two, proteins. So any excess protein that the cells have dropped off. And number three, a type of cell, a specialist cell called lymphocytes. L-Y-M-P-H-O-C-Y-T-E-S. Obviously, that lymph has got that bit of plasma in it as well. The plasma that's seeped out to create that vortex, that's been carried along as well. So if you want to just pop plasma in brackets, you can do, because that lymph will consist of that as well. So that lymph then gets collected by the lymphatic vessels, and then that lymph will travel around the body. So the lymph vessels um, run parallel to our veins. So that's why we link our lymphatic and our circulatory system really closely together, because the um, lymphatic vessels run parallel to our veins. And these will then run around the body, collecting more and more of that waste, and then on its route, it's going to go through something called a lymph node. So those of you who have done any massage with me will have heard me talk about lymph nodes. We are always working towards lymph nodes, helping to drain that lymph towards those nodes. And I want you to imagine the lymph nodes. So they're little bean-like structures. They look like little baked beans. They're probably a bit bigger than a baked bean, but that shape, like a kidney bean type shape. Um, and I want you to imagine them as like little sieves. So as the lymph runs through them, they filter out the nasty things from the lymph. They have two, you might just want to add this because it's not on the sheet, but at your lymph nodes, there are two special cells that sit there waiting for the lymph to pass through. We've got macrophages. M-A-C-R-O-P-H-A-G-E-S. So the macrophages are there to destroy antigens or harmful um, substances. So you can see where the defense part of the lymphatic system comes in. And we've also got extra lymphocytes. So that, that third um, consistency of lymph, we've got extra lymphocytes. Your lymphocytes um, create or produce antibodies for defense. So two specialist cells that sit at the lymph nodes Imagine those lymph nodes as little um, sieves, and as the lymph runs through those, it sieves out the nasties. 
the nasty cells, the harmful substances, some of the toxins, and those lymph nodes then deal with um, those harmful substances through using the macrophages and the lymphocytes. So we talk about our lymph nodes as filtering, and that's why I want you to think of the little sieves. And we've got them all over our body, and we're going to label some of them. So when we're massaging, we are always massaging towards those lymph nodes. Remember, your lymphatic circulation hasn't got a heart to beat it around the body. So it relies on our movement, the movement of our muscles contracting and relaxing, and those lymphatic vessels running through the muscles in order to sort of move that lymph along. So if you think our massage is gonna to help to push um, that lymph to where it needs to go. So we've got lymph vessels, uh, lymph nodes behind our knees, in our groin, in our elbows, in our armpits. We've got lots around our neck. That's what your doctor feels for when you're poorly to see if your lymph nodes are up. And as the lymph filters past those, it's going to, the waste and the toxic ingredients within that lymph are going to be dealt with. So once that lymph has created that journey and gone through the lymph nodes that it needs to, um, the filtered lymph is then drained into ducts. So that paragraph there, lymphatic vessels transport lymph to nodes for filtering. Filtered lymph is then drained into ducts, D-U-C-T-S. And then we've got clean lymph. So once it's gone through all of the filtering at the nodes and it's gone through the ducts, we've then got clean filtered lymph. And that then just re-enters the blood circulation via veins as plasma and the whole journey starts freshly again. So it's not a circulation that goes back round, it does its thing and it finishes and then the cells will do their thing again. The plasma will seep, the toxins will be absorbed, the lymph does its thing, filters into the veins. So it's a process that happens and has an ending but it continuously does happen. So these lymph nodes are situated through the body and they include the axillary lymph node, which is in the armpit or under the arm. So when we're massaging the arms, we are working towards the axillary lymph node. Remember that because it's a bit like an auxiliary nurse, like a helper. We have the supratrochlear lymph node, which is at the back of the elbow. So when we're massaging the arm, in fact, we're working to the supratrochlea and then up to the axillary. We have the inguinal lymph node, which is in the groin. So massaging the leg, ultimately we're working towards that, which is why we would always work upwards. And the popliteal, which is behind the knee. So again, working the leg, we work up to the popliteal and then up to the inguinal. There are some more, we'll label those on your diagram in a moment. So um, once it's been filtered through the nodes, we then get to our um, lymphatic duct. So this is where the clean lymph is now just plasma because all of the nasties have been taken out of it um, and it's going to re-enter the blood circulation. Um, we've got two ducts that sit in the body, um, one situated along the spine, which is the thoracic duct, T-H-O-R-A-C-I-C, -I -I duct. And in the neck, we have the right lymphatic duct. So the right lymphatic duct is smaller. That deals with the right arm and the, right, uh, the head and the right sort of hand side of the trunk and the arm. 
and the thoracic duct deals with the left hand side of the body and both legs. So the lymph that's coming from those areas. So we want to be aware that lymph deals with toxins. So when we are massaging, we are aiding that flow of lymph. Remember, it doesn't have a heart to beat it round. So the lymph coming from my toes when I'm stood up all day is really difficult for it to get to any of those nodes, let alone the ducts, um, for that process to occur. So it relies on my movement. But then that's where massage is going to be really good. We're encouraging that flow and ridding those toxins from the body. So increasing the lymphatic circulation so that we are aiding waste and toxin removal. Our lymphatic circulation will also deal with excess fluid. So we call excess fluid oedema, which is spelled O-E-D-E-M-A. So that excess fluid we might refer to as water retention, but if you've had puffy or swollen ankles, particularly on a day like today when it's hot and if we don't move around a lot and we're stood up, gravity pulling all that water and fluid down to our feet, we might find that our lower limbs get a little bit puffy and that's just because our lymphatic circulation is struggling to deal with that excess fluid. If we've got very sedentary lifestyles, elderly um, might suffer with oedema. Um, pregnancy, that can be a cause of it as well. Your body's just working extra hard to do lots of other things, let alone dealing with your lymphatic circulation. So your lymph deals with your waste products, but also excess fluid. So then you can think how good your massage is. If you've got a heavily pregnant client with really puffy swollen ankles, get them on the couch, um, probably not laying down, but sort of semi-reclined and massage their feet and legs, that water retention will be relieved almost instantly. Having said that, as soon as they get off the couch, probably an hour later, it's gonna come back, but still, it's gonna give some relief. Um, if the water retention is there and there's a known reason, so like your pregnancy, hot day, um, sedentary lifestyle, elderly client who isn't moving around very often, massage is great for that. It's going to really release that fluid and transport it away from those areas of the body. If for any reason there's no... Um, there's might go past. Um, so if that fluid retention is there I don't know how to put it into words, for no reason so it shouldn't be there it's just suddenly on a client that shouldn't be having water retention there's no reason or rhyme behind it they need to visit their GP water retention for no reason can be a sign of an issue with the heart so that would contraindicate your client for a treatment if they had undiagnosed water retention or for no reason you're not going to go because it's a hot day and you've been stood up all day, you're not going to go to the doctor for a diagnosis, you know why. But if there's no rhyme or reason as to why the client has got water retention or oedema, um, they would need to visit their GP. Other than that, massage is great. So functions of the lymphatic circulation include number one, distribution of fluid. So as we've just talked about, um, excess fluid will be collected and disposed of via the lymphatic circulation. So number one, distribution of fluid. If you want to put oedema in brackets, just to remind you that that could be fluid retention, then you can do that. So number two, an offshoot of that, is that your lymphatic circulation is going to control swelling. Number three, if you think about those special cells that we've got in the lymphatic system, um, your macrophages and your lymphocytes, um, fighting infection is a function of the lymphatic circulation. Defence, fighting infection. 
And the last one, which is a bit of a random one really, and not particularly linked to any of our treatments, but um, transportation of fat is a function. So a way of transporting fat around the body is via the lymph circulation. So really basically, the lymphatic circulation deals with the waste that the blood can't handle. So it's more intense waste products from the cells. Think about your lactic acid as a really good example. Um, our massage is going to help by increasing that lymphatic circulation, aiding the lymphatic circulation, and so effectively detoxifying the body because that's what the lymphatic circulation is doing. So our massage is going to increase the detox of the body. Everyone loves a detox. So talk to your clients about that. And eventually those toxins are going to leave the body via a client's urine. So at the end of a treatment, if you've all had a treatment before, your therapist has probably told you to drink lots of water. And they might not have told you why, but we just get used to hearing, drink plenty of water, drink plenty of water, and we don't actually know why. This is why. Your lymphatic circulation to get rid of those toxins from the body needs water. The more water we drink, the more urine we produce, and that enables our body to detox. So when you tell your client to drink plenty of water, it's quite a nice idea to tell them why. Not just hearing 300 times a day, drink plenty of water. Because when you use the word detox, that client is going to go away and drink water, believe me. <laughs> okay, so let's have a quick look at our diagram. Goodness knows why they put the leg bone, the femur in there. I don't know if that's just to let you know that that is a leg, but I think we can clearly see it was. Most random um, addition to a diagram I've ever seen, but somebody probably got paid a lot of money to decide that that bone was a necessity there. <laughs> Obviously not me. So, A. Um, do you remember we've got a bone at the back of our head called the occipital bone? Well, we've got some lymph nodes in there and they are called the occipital nodes. So A is pointing just to the back of the head there, to the occipital nodes. So these are nodes that are going to be dealing with um, lymph that's been produced from the head. Then we've got lymph nodes. These are the ones that the doctor feels for when um, you say you're poorly, you've got a sore throat. Um, so think this is your mandible bone and these are called the submandibular. Submandibular nodes. Lower down, just coming into the back of the neck here, where the cervical vertebrae are of your spine, we have the cervical nodes. We have some nodes in and around our intestine, intestines, intestines. Um, so D is pointing to our intestinal nodes. Coming back up the body, we've already talked about the node that sits behind the knee, that's the popliteal, P-O-P, -P. oh, you've got the spelling, haven't you? L-I-T-E-A-L. So behind the knee, the popliteal node, and then coming higher up the leg in the groin, we've got the inguinal node or nodes, both sides. In the pelvic region, G, we've got the iliac nodes, I-L-I-A-C, iliac. And then in the armpit or under the arm, we've got those axillary nodes. So there are more, we haven't labeled the supratrochlea on there. but these are your predominant ones and any others you'll be spoken about in class too.
spoken to about in class. But for those of you who are doing any level three, chances are you might see that diagram again. Okay, lastly, I just want to talk about some additional lymphatic um, structures that we have, which is lymphatic tissue. So along or within our body, we also have like an extra defense or additional defense in certain areas. And we've got lymphatic tissue. And those are things like your tonsils, your adenoids, your appendix. This is additional defense that the body uses um, to fight infection, particularly in vulnerable areas. So back of the nose and throat, very vulnerable, um, need something there to help to collect harmful substances or to deal with harmful substances. And if you think about your appendix, that's right at the start of your large intestine. So as your small intestine finishes and starts going onto your colon, um, we've got this little hook shaped um, structure, which is your appendix. And any nasties that have sort of been gathered in with the um, digestive system sort of get dropped off at the appendix and dealt with there before it then goes around the rest of the body. So last little just structure there to be aware of. So you've got lymphatic vessels, we've got lymph nodes, we've got lymph ducts, and then we've also got lymph tissue. I think lymph can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes when you learn it. And I think you can want to make it a little bit more difficult than it is. I would say that for us as therapists, we just want to be aware that probably the biggest impact we have is on the lymphatic system. And the fact that that is all to do with draining away toxins, fluid, nastiness in the defense side of it, um, by boosting the lymphatic circulation, we are aiding all the other body processes um, because we're helping to clear the body of the not nice substances um, that our body can collect, either through body processes or from outside. So your massage is a huge um, form of helping to detox the body. There's my dog's two pence worth as well there. <laughs> He's very passionate about... Um, the lymphatic circulation. <laughs>